Tex Olympic Triathlon. One hour, 54 minutes. First overall, let's break it down. At the start of the swim, I was wondering if I should wear a swim skin and a wetsuit. And honestly, I was gearing more towards a swim skin because the water is 76 degrees and I, I was feel like I would be overheating but I ended up just getting the wetsuit on and it was so hard to put on because it was very humid in the morning. Your skin is like all sweaty and wet so it took a while to put on my wetsuit. At the swim start I knew I could start a little easier. The Pro 70.3 and Ironman swims you go literally all out probably one minute to 105 per 100 meter pace starting out so you really want to see who's the good swimmer that can hang on to the front pack. But this one I started very easy casual and just formed a gap. It was me and Nick. Nick is a former Arizona State University college swimmer. There were seaweeds, the water was pretty dirty. There's a video where you see me swimming and by the side of the lake there's like gunk. I was pulling seaweed out the water. Seaweed got on my shoulder but I just kept swimming. At the last turn Nick did surge and got first out the water. I think I was around 10 seconds behind him but I was at around a 90% effort 90, low 90s. If I really wanted to give 100%, I think I could have caught him and be first, but I decided to save that energy. Got to transition one, headed onto the bike. I got out the transition first, and the roads were pretty wet and it was raining. I didn't want to crash, do anything stupid, and be less aggressive. I know the first and second loop of the four loop bike course, it was mainly open. And then on loops three and four, all the age group Olympic sprint and rookie distance are gonna come in. So it's gonna be more crowded towards the second half of the bike. The bike guy was able to push 280 watts average and 295 normalized power for the watt for a 57 minute flat. I knew I could have pushed a little more, but I didn't want to, you know, go down, you know, get injured. So I want to stay upright on the bike. Pretty good bike leg, 57 minute, got into transition two, put on my run shoes and went out for the 10 kilometer run. <laughs> The 10K run consisted of two loops, 5K. The first 5K, I was going pretty, you know, strong, 180s heart rate, which is pretty normal for me for a 10K run. I clocked in at below 1730 for the 5K, which is on track to around that 35 minute. And then I did cramp up a little. I felt it twice on my right quad. So I stopped for five to 10 seconds and that was the only time I stopped. I stretched it a little, but then continued on and felt nothing after that. The second loop, I did die a little, but I just kept going sub six minute pace and then the last half a mile i just you know shut it down soaked in the crowd the crowd was hyped and it was very exciting to see everyone out there and supporting one of each other and honestly probably one of the best run course spectator view that i've experienced everyone's lining up on that bridge coming down when you're running the the end of the loop and they're cheering you on getting ready to cheer you on for the lap number two or bring you home to the finish and then i finished with a 35 minute 30 10k but it was 0.1 mile short so i'll call it a 36 minute 10k which is still the fastest 10k run i've had after a bike in the olympic with a total time of one hour 54 minutes being first overall for the olympic elite category <laughs> Big shout out to my sponsor and my professional team, Diamond Factory Racing, presented by Good Life. Without them, I would not be here today. I am living my dream and they are fully supporting me, fully funding my ventures. And I'm truly grateful that I have these backings and I can do what I'm able to do right now, doing YouTube videos and racing as a professional triathlete. Also big shout out to my coach, Natasha and the NVDM coaching squad. We had a big turnout and lots of cheering going on and lots of PR. So it's gonna be sad leaving the community in Austin, Texas, but I'm sure we'll see each other at different races and training camps. Also, thank you to Anna from Apex Photo and Video for coming out to the Cap Text and filming me. If you guys want any shots of photos and videos of your triathlon, reach out to her. I'll put her page in the description below and thank you so much. I was so in the moment after the race, just soaking up all the moments with all the amazing friends I have in Texas after the Cap Tech Triathlon that I actually still have my medal and I have not given it away. I should not be having this, but if you're interested, I could sign it and send it, ship it to you. I think only in the US, I think Canada, Europe, there it's pretty expensive, but yeah, I should not have this or else I'll give it to a friend, but I still have my medal. Up next, I have Ironman 70.3 Boulder on June 10th. 
That'll be in one and a half weeks. I am here in Denver right now getting acclimated. We're at 5,800 feet. One and a half weeks might be too short, but we'll see. It's usually just at least a two week for the acclimation or just going right to the race one or two days before the race if you're racing at altitude. But I'm excited to carry this momentum forward to my next race. And then we're gonna have six weeks, around six weeks here at altitude. Then come down and hopefully do Ironman 70.3 Oregon on July 23rd. So that's my race schedule. Austin, Texas, you will be missed. I'm excited to start this next chapter in my life. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.